than railways. See, it is very easy to, I am going in the infrastructure, roads, railways, like that I am going. So that, you know, some of them are repetitive, but there are differences in each. Even the language we talk, if you are using a, what do you call the WMM, other thing, the aggregate, here we use the word aggregate to a road engineer. When you talk to a railway engineer, we have to use the term ballast. The language itself is different. They identify themselves in different way. That's why I am putting it as a different heading. A payment and semi-rigid payments, there will be very little difference except the methodology of insulation and other things. But still, their mindset, the requirements are totally different even though the product could be same. So that's why you have to understand it. Now this is a rockfall protection. There is very little. It's a blasting that the railway track is light. There is very little gap between this and this. Even a small stone falls down on this, it could derail the train. So the rockfall protection, it has to be. For that, over a period of time, a netting was invented, which has got special features by putting a steel rope into the other with the special locking arrangements. So that they did, and it has got internally a fiber core. Why a fiber core? It is very flexible. The netting is very flexible, so it can hug the contour. It has to hug the contour. The profile is very different. It has to hug the contour. So that is done. And the result of the installations have been done. The concept is not there previously. I mean, rockfall protection, the concept was not there previously. Somebody thought it's, it can be done. And by this what happened, even if there is a detachment of the boulders, they are within, falls within the net and comes to the side drain, doesn't come to the traffic portion. This has been used for roads also, but critical is a Railway, tunnel portals. There's a Mumbai Pune Expressway. And then we also use in the adjoining the tracks and other things, there are serious cutting. We use the gabions as previously used a random double wall as a masonry wall. The difference between the random double wall and the gabion wall is what? A gabion wall is complete porous structure. The continuity is there. A random rubble wall you construct or you call it breast wall and you provide heap holes to drain the water and, the, and you use a graded filter as a filter at the back. But normally within a short time they get choked up and the heap holes doesn't function. Whereas here the entire wall, the water can come out because it's completely porous structure. What you require is a textile at the back, a thin layer of textile as a filter. So the water enters, flows, and in front you can put a small drain to collect the water and take it away. So, you know, in this process what you are doing, you are eliminating one disturbing force, the water pressure. So you can design this structure for only the earth pressure and not for water pressure. This is what the same thing is in the reinforced soil wall also. In reinforced soil wall, we use a granular material. We call it free draining material. We also use a gravel in the front of the fascia. I mean, just at the back of the fascia. So it is designed generally for zero water pressure, built up condition. So that's why it becomes economical. Whereas if you do a conventional cantilever wall, even you provide a deep hole, it's not possible to totally disregard it. You have to take it into account. That's the difference. And one difference is, I just want to go up and tell you one difference is, in a reinforced soil wall, I think Mohan will agree, you have to use the strongest grid at the bottom. And then as the height reduces you, go on using lesser strength grid.
But when you talk about the roads, it's totally different. At the bottom post, at the subgrade subbase interface, you can use a geosynthetic of very low strength because the distance between that and the load transfer point, that is the wheel, it is very different. But as you move to the base layer, to the asphaltic layer, the grid has to have much higher strength, more stiffness, micro strain. Okay, so this is a difference. It depends on what from the point of load incidence. That is important. That's what designs, what is required there. So I will just to show you the various kind of structures that can be built. Again, Mumbai Pune Highway, not only that side, the other valley side also we have used the JBNs. And in bridge approach, embankments, you can use it. Otherwise, you know, normally you find you make a concrete other thing. Here it is used flexible in case of a river and other thing. It is energy dissipation because of the roughness of the boulders which you fill inside the gabion, so it is very effective. So completed structures and for cover protection also around the piers, you can use the textile and the gabions as a cover protection, you can use it. All the principle involved is only what textile you select depending on the soil below. You should have a permeability and apparent opening size. There are two governing considered. The apparent opening size is deciding by the particle which you want to protect. So it should not be able to escape and create a void. But whereas the water should be able to freely flow without obstruction. Normally when we say use it for a filter purpose, a textile we say the filter should have, the geotextile filter should have 5 to 10 times more permeability than that of a soil, okay? That's a thumb rule kind of a thing. And then water resources management. Yeah. so many rivers, so many canals and we have got a irrigation system, we have got a canal system and water, we, so they say in a future wars will be fought on water. We, we know what is happening in Brahmaputra, between India and China there is the issue, Pakistan and India on this side we have got a water problem, so that is all. So the water has to be preserved. So interlinking of river, we are talking about it. Investment in irrigation programs, store and distribute the water for cultivation, increase agriculture by irrigating uncultivated area. More hectares have to be brought in under cultivation. Even the existing canals doesn't perform water. The water doesn't reach the tail area. It is getting seeping through in the initial basis itself. The water supposed to go to the tail is not going. So all this can be handled by Lining. So, canal lining, if you look at it, effective barrier, highly flexible to withstand stress, differential settlement, thermal stress, hydraulic pressures, installation is simple, easier, improves canal hydraulics, reduce water logging and salinity. When I used to advocate the use of uh, membrane in canals, somebody used to argue with me, a politician, no, no, the water seeps, that is good. He said what? The land get uh, water. From the canal, the water is freely available to He doesn't understand the water when it goes up or extra over irrigation, it happens, it brings in the salinity of the soil with that. So what is a fertile soil after some time became totally saline. It will never be over irrigated. No weed growth, prevention of canal erosion, no piping, low maintenance, 
So simply you said you get a canal, you should have an anchor trench and the material should be anchored and lowered and then it should be properly welded. It will be soil, a textile, a membrane, uh, again a textile over that. So here is the anchor, there are ways of putting the anchor. Anchor means it doesn't slip down the slope, so it has to be anchored. And then it is protective covering, we can't leave it exposed. Because if you leave it exposed, one is a UV problem, other is a vandalism problem. So we have to cover it, we use a thing, M15, about uh, 15 centimeter, 10 to 15 centimeter M15 concrete is used as a cladding to protect the geosynthetic material. I will just show a case study, Dud Ganga Canal in Maharashtra, it is 24 kilometers and the line with concrete 11 kilometers and that's what failed. So there is a contour canal, one side is a hill, other side is a valley. Water loss was 30 percent due to seepage and this was a canal with a concrete lining. It all cracked up and vegetation taking place freely. And when you stop the water, this is how it is silting and other thing. You have to clean up. And this is what happening in the side, the ponding effect, the water not going in the canal, but more on the outside the canal. And this is how, another canal by the side of the canal. So these are the very 250M, GSM, 1MM thick, 250, again textile, concrete, 75 mm and this was a cleaned up canal, then it is lined and concrete layers and that's how it is flowing. Similarly in the MP also we have done, so it's an example. And similarly for large reservoirs, it is one such example. Finalux industry, I think the PVC manufacturing unit, it requires a lot of water. They had two large reservoirs, the water was leaking and the water is very costly. So, we lined up the entire thing with the membrane and within two years they have recovered the total cost they have spent on this because of the saving of water. And there is uh, some other stories which I don't want to say because you know first time we did it correctly then second time they used, uh, they bought the material and gave it to uh, another company to do the installation which totally failed. Then we have to enter the scene after two years again, redo the whole thing. So insulation is very important. There is cost saving 2 lakhs per day. This is what I said, benefit cost, you have to work it out. This is how you have to justify. In most of the cases, the benefit cost, life cycle cost, river and shore protection, as I said, you know, there could be a tube, there could be a KBN wall, there should be bag, a filter, aggregate, so many things can be there. Masonry concrete rigid structure, geosynthetic, flexible structure, non porous, here totally porous, material brought from far away, locally available material use. Costlier economically and easier to insulation. Technology is totally different. Uh, these are some of the examples how the gabions can be used in the other things. Sketchy for shore protection, even in dams, the core dams, spillways, dissipation of energy. These are some practical examples. It was all in Gujarat only. As the construction, first to toe wall. It's all visual. Here you can see below the water level, the high water level, we have used the polymer gabion. Above that, we have used the steel gabion. And this was a very peculiar case. Ah, this you can clearly see polymer steel gabion. This is a very peculiar case. Over the bank, the water level went up to another couple of five meters, that is 5 meters in Surat. 
And beyond the bank, there were all hutments and slum dollars, other things. There was no space, nothing was available. You must have heard a couple of years back, at least 10 years back, there was a very big flood in Surat and a lot of damage was done. So, at this point, we cannot do anything. So, we construct a totally Gabian wall was constructed like this. And inside, we completely plastered it with cement. And no other type of construction is possible. The space is so little. So this is the only possible construction. This is how it was constructed. You can see the river inside the wall. Up to MWL, maximum water level. There is some other thing in Pune and other places. This is an example of, again, a Gabian wall with Reinforcement at the back. So we use a very little fascia and other thing, and the total thing is done by like this. You can see the fascia with the gabion, and behind this is a bridge approach. And here we prefer the gabion because the dissipation of energy is much better because of the roughness of the stones. And this is a completed structure. This is another example. I mean, it is left to you. When you say the locally available material, you have to use it to the maximum extent. Uh, suppose sand is available, you use the sand. If the boulder is available, you use the boulder. Because we have to optimize the cost. So we use sandbags or boulder. In this particular case, there was no rocks available. So we use the gabions filled with sandbags and then completed the whole project. It's a diversion channel, very cost effective. Soil filled in JBN, entire 760 meter length of the diversion channel, approximately 75,000, completed in 42 days. Because it's emergency, it's a dam. Unless the diversion channel is start functioning, the main construction cannot take place there. Okay? At Tista. Uh, this is a picture of the gabion. Inside that, you have got bags. And then, show studies in Gujarat, there was an erosion at Balsa district, Tital, Swaminarayan Mandir. There was a kind of erosion, it was threatening the temple. So, this was planned, this was a structure, this was an erosion profile. A filter was laid. Construction started, completed, and high tide. It's about uh, now nearly 20 years. Because uh, the last recording was 2000, now it is nearly 20 years. There has to be some periodical maintenance. Similarly, in the creeks, Mur Bhagava, and other places, Alibag, Maharashtra, like that. So we saw, I'll show you the one tube. So we got little, you know, it is a learning by experience because it's all developed indigenously. We learned how others do abroad and we did it indigenously. So first tube, then we did it two tubes and one tube because the height requirement was there. So it requires a lot of, uh, you know, bearing capacity, stability, internal, external, all those things are required here also. The wave pressure, will it be able to withstand, will it move, all those things, calculations have to be done. But finally, what you get, it is like this. A textile filter at the bottom. One tube blade, and it is final. A two tube at the bottom, one tip. Sankarpu in uh, West Bengal, I think it is it. First. Then Haldia. It was totally different. We had, we formed a submerged dike for two meter, two kilometer in Hooghly River. For this, we have to use special barges to lower the tube in the middle of the Hooghly River up to eight meter. 
special crane arrangement, filling, everything was done. So this was a central barge where you have a geotube encased in a tubular gabion, rope gabion with a crane arrangement. With a crane arrangement. So once it is totally filled, it is lowered to the required depth. Now it is totally filled. You see the pulleys, other thing. Here it's all and it is totally lowered into that. I have a lot of photographs. And before we started this work, this is what the trial we have to do in a shallow water. Whether it will work or not. Because once you go to the middle of the ugly river and try and something burst, you are not, you are no way. So we did it in a shallow water. Experiment. It is a learning. You have to gain the knowledge by experimentation and slow, slow steps, simple steps. That is what is the whole thing. So this is a tupada, a tube encased with gabion. It is in the, even in the recent uh, uh, cyclone, PETA, that's the one, PETA. It didn't directly hit, it went above that. But even then, you know, the areas which are not protected, the stretches which are not protected by this show protection, they were all affected. Upada is very famous, you know, it's near Pitapuram and uh, the thing. It was very famous because uh, it is almost, I don't know how many years, it's more than 10 years or 12 years since the work was done. And I had a very interesting thing, case study, the Hyderabad, the remote sensing thing with the satellite, they have taken the pictures over the last uh, 10 years before and 10 years after the installation and they projected what is, how the coastline is behaving differently. Before the, what is the erosion, what is the accreditation rate, what is the erosion and accreditation afterwards. That's a very interesting study which is available. It was uh, presented in Bhuvanesh for uh, coastal protection work under CBAP. So, geosynthetics, attractive, why? Offer simple and easy solution to many complex problems. More development in products and usage. It's a continuing. I mean, the product development as well as the installation methodologies is all, it's a continuous process. Even after 33 years being in the industry, we are learning because every site is a new opportunity and no two sites are similar. So it gives you a lot of, unless your concepts and fundamentals are clear, you can always divide the solution. There is a standard method of approach. You have to use the engineering concept there, use the factor of safety, find out the failure modes and check for each failure mode how it can be. Then finally decide after all this thing, you have to decide how we will execute it. It cannot be a theoretical solution. Execution is as important as that. Every stage you think of using a product, how it could be installed in the ground under the existing circumstances. That you have to visualize and the methodology has to be done. So suppose we are doing a project, we have to look into what is the layer thickness, what is going to be the, the design gives you certain width, but is what is the roller width, that's what Mohan was trying to do when we were trying to do. Will it be able to have sufficient space for the roller to move? All these things have to be conceived beforehand. That is what important. Highly flexible. Covers almost all civil engineering application. Okay, geotechnical engineering is a fundamental because it deals with the soil and water. But it is not just that. Transportation, road, ports, harbors, environmental. So it, it covers almost all the rockfall protection, landslide control. I mean, it covers almost all the civil engineering field. So you can create solutions. Therefore, impossible to design applications are made possible. Because when we started the geosynthetic in the country, no conventional solution is working, how can I 
Can't you help a product off? That is the kind of challenge. No, that is nothing like that. Everywhere you have to use it because the paradigm shift has taken place. The conventional materials are not available and no longer it is going to be available. So the only answer is appropriate use of geosynthetic materials. That is how the changeover is taking place and highly eco-friendly because people always confuse with the plastic, with the geosynthetic, the plastic which they talk about the pollution, the other thing is a small gauge which other thing. In this case we are talking about different materials and they are environmentally friendly, there are no side effects, no bad things about it, that's why it is used all over the world as a billion dollar industry. So to conclude, I talked about the life cycle cost and other thing. You can actually say what will be, the, you can decide, you reinforce soil wall, you can decide for 120 years, you can decide for 60 years also. You have got an option by using the appropriate factor, what you want you can do it, you have got it. You can take the factors accordingly and do that. So to sum up, I will say it is unwise to pay too much, but it is worse to pay too little. Why? When you pay too much, you lose a little money, that is extra money you have paid. But when you pay too little, sometimes you lose everything. It's contradictory. When you use little, you lose that also. Because it's not put to a useful purpose. Because the thing you bought is incapable of doing the function it was bought to do. That is what is important. The performance at the end of the day, the geosynthetic material in an application, it is expected to do a performance, expected performance. That is what. And that is what our desire and that is how the whole thing has to be conceived. Okay. Thank you.